There's a lot of noise coming out of Australia at the moment revolving around shark attacks. I'm sure many of you will have seen the news stories recently of three fatal shark attacks that have happened over the space of about six weeks. A surfer was killed off Western Australia and then two others have died in Queensland, a 40-year-old spearfisher and a 17-year-old girl who was swimming. But there's been a fair bit of inquest into that latter incident, the 17-year-old swimmer. Charlie Zamuda was fatally bitten by a shark while she was swimming off Wurrum Beach on Breeby Island, a popular tourist destination just to the north of Brisbane. As of currently, there's no confirmation of what shark species was responsible, but most lines of thinking point towards a bull shark or maybe a white or a tiger shark. But the reasons as to why it's happened have proved even more controversial. Members of the public and even one anonymous shark scientist have pointed to the burying of a whale carcass in late 2024 on the very same beach as the reason for this tragic incident. So join me today as we look into the wildly controversial topic of whale beach burials, and we'll find out whether there really is any truth to the claims that they're responsible for shark attacks. Welcome back back to another Shark Bites episode, everyone. Now, I had lots of you in the comments asking me to discuss the Australian shark-related incidents so far in 2025, mostly because I think I made that video about shark attacks actually being down in 2024. Check out that video there, by the way. But just really quickly before we start digging into the whole whale carcass burying thing, I wanted to point out that these incidents in Australia, while still incredibly tragic, are about normal for the time of year. Shark attacks follow what we call a stochastic process, which means the probability of them is fairly random year on year. But there's, of course, patterns and trends. And for Australia, those shark attack patterns revolve around the Australian summer, running from around late November to March. At this time of year, you've got warmer temperatures, both on land and in the sea, which puts more people in the water and can bring sharks closer to shore. So you've got a combination there that leads to more shark attacks. I think it's something like two thirds of all Australian shark attacks in the last 20 years have happened between the months of November and April. This whale carcass stuff that we're going to discuss today, though, is really interesting, and it's such a controversial topic for Australians. Since the commercial whaling moratorium in 1986, global whale populations have been on the rise. And this is a pretty crazy thing for a species that was near enough hunted to the brink of extinction 100 years ago. So to see their populations booming is a big conservation success story. But with an increase in their populations globally, you'll also get an increase in the frequency of whale mortality events, or even live strandings. And with dead whales come the predatory scavengers. It's no secret that sharks of all shapes and sizes are attracted to whale carcasses. It's pretty well documented across the scientific literature. Whales or dead whales provide an extremely nutritious meal for a shark. That blubber is just full of calories and sharks will rarely pass up on the opportunity for a free, nutritious, high calorific meal. During their annual migrations to and from the equator, whales will often die, whether through injury or just natural causes. And within a few hours of dying, decay starts to set in and gases will build up in their bodies. And it's these gases that cause the whales to float on the surface of the water. Sometimes whales can float for days or even weeks on the surface of the ocean, drifting around with the currents and attracting a whole suite of marine scavengers like birds, bony fish and sharks, all keen to capitalize on that free food. Now in most cases whales will die far out to sea where they're fed on by surface scavengers for as long as possible. But eventually those gases within its body will dissipate and that carcass will sink to the bottom of the sea floor where it's fed on by even more scavengers until there's nothing left. It's called a whale fall. If you've never seen videos of whale falls at the bottom of the ocean before, it is quite a sight, so you should absolutely go and check them out on YouTube. Sometimes though, before those gases within the body of the whale have had a chance to dissipate, the whale carcass is transported by ocean currents closer to shore, where it can end up stranding onto beaches. And when it's stranded on the beach, the blood and oil continues to leak off the carcass out into the ocean where it can be detected by those ocean scavengers. Sometimes that plume of oil and other discharge can travel miles and miles out into the ocean, drawing in sharks who come very close to shore, keen to see if they can still feed on that whale. Now, normally if this has happened in a super remote location, it's not really that much of a problem. But if it's happened on a popular tourist beach or beaches that are regularly used by surfers, it can cause problems. Primarily because whale carcasses are actually pretty dangerous to humans from a health perspective because they can carry a range of zoonotic diseases that can potentially infect us. But as well as that, the potential for them to lure in larger, more dangerous shark species is actually relatively high. And what you don't want is lots of large, dangerous shark species pumped up by the scent of a highly nutritious meal swimming around loads of swimmers and surfers. It's just a recipe for a shark attack. So when this specific situation happens, authorities are often brought in to deal with that whale carcass. Now there's a range of different methods that authorities use to deal with washed up whale carcasses, which include doing nothing, towing it away from shore before it washes up, or chopping it up and taking it to landfill. But there's of course pitfalls and costs associated with each of these methods. You can't really do nothing if the carcass has washed up on a popular tourist beach because of the risk to public health, 
and then towing it away before it strands or chopping it up into tiny pieces after it strands is a logistical nightmare and extremely costly. So because of that, one of the most costly, effective and logistically viable methods of dealing with a stranded whale carcass is something known as a beach burial. Often all that's needed is a digger and decent access to the beach where a small team of people can dig a pit in the sand above the tide line, pop the whale in and just cover it up. It's relatively quick, super cost effective, nice and simple, right? Well, not quite. Like the other methods of whale carcass removal, beach burials also have their pitfalls. When you bury one on a beach, you run the risk of contaminating the surrounding area or the groundwater with decomposing whale juice. And there's still the potential to attract those scavenging shark species to the surf zone during and after decomposition of the buried whale, depending on the placement of the burial site. Whale beach burials seem to be particularly contentious or controversial, mainly because of a bit of scientific uncertainty about some of those risks. We don't really know how long it takes for them to fully decompose under the sand, with estimates from a few years to decades. The jury's also still out as to whether beach buried whales can really still attract sharks closer to shore despite being buried a decent distance up from the waterline. And it's this that creates tensions between local town residents and the authorities trying to deal with the dead whale. On more than one occasion, whales have been buried on beaches across Queensland in Australia, only for enraged locals to kick up a fuss, and the town councils then decide to backtrack and later go on to dig the whale back up and dispose of it in other ways, probably to the cost of the taxpayer, let's be honest. Specifically, one of these occasions was back in 2017 on Nobby's Beach in Port Macquarie, where a 12 meter humpback whale had been buried. And after a fiery town council meeting and a 3000 strong petition, it was exhumed from the sand at a cost of over 50,000 Aussie dollars. It's not the first time, and I don't imagine it'll be the last time that something like that happens on a beach in Queensland or New South Wales. But sometimes the authorities don't back down. Back in October, 2024, a 10 to 15 ton humpback whale stranded on Wurrum Beach on Breeby Island which sits in between the Sunshine Coast and Brisbane in Queensland, Australia. Wirren Beach is about two and a half kilometers long and due to its relatively close distance to Brisbane and the Sunshine Coast, it's a popular spot for beach goers, swimmers and surfers. At the time, there was a little bit of pushback about the beach burial, but contractors were hired by the town council and the whale was buried nearby. I say nearby there because I can't find an exact burial site for the whale on Wirren, but it's undoubtedly somewhere on that beach, as can be seen by a Facebook post from the contractors that were hired to do the job. Now, to my knowledge, there's no specific regulations as to exactly how far the whale has to be buried from the waterline, but the minimum seems to range from around 10 to 20 meters. And again, there's no hard and fast regulations as to exactly how deep they have to be buried either, but most seem to be somewhere around two to three meters deep in the sand. So the Wurrin whale carcass was buried and not much more was said about it. That was until a few months later when Charlie Zamuda was killed by an unknown shark species while swimming off, you guessed it, Wurren Beach. There were exactly 118 days between the burial of the whale carcass and Charlie's death. Nowhere near long enough for that whale to have fully decomposed. After the incident, a number of people online pointed to the whale beach burial as the biggest factor in the death of Charlie's. And interestingly, we even got a comment from an anonymous shark expert. Now, I'd be cautioning you all to take these quotes with a little pinch of salt because one, they're from the Daily Mail newspaper, a newspaper notorious for exaggerating the truth. And two, because the apparent expert has decided to comment on this anonymously due to fear of blowback. It's all good and well to criticize something, but when you haven't got the courage to publicly own that opinion, I don't really tend to look on that with much regard. Also, when it's done anonymously, there's no way for us to verify this person's qualifications on sharks or even whale beach burials. Anyway, the alleged expert was in disbelief that they buried the carcass, claiming that the oil from the whale would be leaking out of the sand and into the water for years. Now, I'm not sure how they can prove that without knowing the specific location and the conditions of the burial site. Maybe they do, I don't know, but without evidence, it's a bold claim. And I think it's very easy to have this opinion with hindsight here, only voicing it after the death of Charlie. And you could ask the question, well, if you were so convinced that it was going to lead to a shark attack, why didn't you speak up before? I think with this incident, we've got to take a step back and look at it a bit more broadly instead of focusing on just this specific case. And there's three areas that I'd focus on to help us try and understand it in a wider context. The first one is the location. South Queensland and North New South Wales in Australia is a particularly sharky coastline. And the area that we're talking about here from Fraser slash Kagari Island through Brisbane and the Gold Coast down to Coffs Harbour and Port Macquarie is a shark attack hotspot. So much so that it's sometimes been referred to as the 
Bethel Coast due to the relatively high rate of shark fatalities there. Now, even though they're still rare on the whole, this specific part of Australia does notoriously have a decent number of incidents. Around Brisbane and the surrounding areas, bull sharks are thought to be the species most often responsible for attacks, but you've also got tiger sharks and you also get white sharks occasionally as well. And during those summer months, the water warms up, ocean productivity increases, and shark activity is higher. So straight off the bat, you're in an area here where there's lots of sharks and historically a decent number of shark attacks, regardless of whether they were whale carcasses or not. I think if you asked any local living around Brisbane, Breeby Island, or even Moreton Island, they'll tell you that those waters are particularly sharky. The next thing we've got to consider here then is other cases of whale beach burials. Doing a fairly comprehensive search across the internet, there's been loads of whale beach burials in Australia, and even more if you include other parts of the world in locations where you get large predatory sharks. New Zealand, South Africa, and Massachusetts all boast decent shark populations and have all buried whale carcasses on their beaches before. Some of the ones in Australia as well weren't too far away from the Wurrin Beach burial either. Kiwana Beach on the Sunshine Coast in 2009, Wurtella Beach again on the Sunshine Coast in 2017, and Mooball Beach in Pottsville just south of Brisbane in 2024. Now doing some serious digging into these beach burial locations, I've not been able to find any other clear examples where a fatal shark attack took place on the same beach in the months after a whale carcass was buried there. There was a string of fatal shark attacks in South Africa on a beach known as Second Beach from 2007 to 2012, where a nearby whale carcass was buried about 10 years earlier in 1998. Second Beach in Port St. John's has often been referred to as the most dangerous beach in the world due to the regularity of its fatal shark incidents. The problem with that case study though was that the attacks that took place over those five years only ever happened within a four month window of the year. And if the whale carcass was responsible, you'd expect the attacks to be taking place year around. Second Beach is such an interesting case study, so if you want a video on it, make sure you hit the like button for this video and let me know in the comments. Now admittedly there might be other cases out there, but what I'm talking about here is a clear-cut example, and the only one that I could find was Charlie Zamuda on Wurrim. So that right there would suggest that there isn't any statistical correlation between whale beach burials and shark attacks on humans. Again, I'm not saying it's impossible, but looking at it broadly, it looks exceptionally unlikely and perhaps more coincidence than anything. Finally then, the third thing we can use as a form of evidence is this particular scientific study here. Authored by scientist James Tucker, the study shone a light on the impact a buried decomposing whale has on the surrounding area. Based on field trials using 360 kilograms of humpback whale flesh, James found that the reach of the decomposition plumes after burial were less than 2.5 meters. They noted in the study that the plumes from the whale carcass didn't actually last very long either and the carcasses were essentially mummifying in the sand. The scientists were very clear though that certain conditions had to be met for this to be achieved. For example, the burial site had to be above the groundwater table and above the high tide mark. If I was looking at the paper critically, there are a few assumptions here in that 360 kilograms of humpback whale flesh is not the same as a 10 ton carcass. And we have to take into account that not all beaches are the same. The conditions and the presence of groundwater can obviously vary between beaches, but it's the scientific research that we've got available to us at the moment. And it points to it generally being a safe practice provided the correct measures are taken. So if we look at all three of those factors there, the sharkiness of the area, the other examples of whale burials, and the leachin study, I think it would be a bit of a stretch to link the death of Charlie's to the buried whale. There's just not enough evidence out there to be able to definitively prove it. And while I'm sure the debate will rage on in Australia, and perhaps even the comments for this video, we've just got to wait for a bit more science to catch up. These things take time though, and a long-term study looking at whale decomposition, you can bet is taking place as we speak. Speaking of humpback whales though, did you ever see the footage of a massive white shark taking down a live one. Well, if not, you can watch it and learn about the scientific study in this video here. Honestly, it's some of the craziest footage that I've ever seen of a white shark, so it's definitely worth the watch. Go on, give it a click here.